Hi everyone, this is HD Jen, and this presentation is going to talk about how to host a program or an event for your group. RHAs and many themes are required to host some sort of an event or program at some point during the academic year. You will want to check with your hall director or your theme's specific housing agreement for the details, as some themes leave programming up to the leadership councils and other require individuals or suites to host smaller programs on a regular basis. Your program may be open to the entire building or even the whole campus, or may be exclusively for people within your theme. While it's difficult to talk about this specifically, since this process is different for every program, we're going to talk a little bit about the general program planning process. When deciding to plan an event, you'll need to consider who, what, where, why, and when. We just discussed the who and the what, so let's talk about when. Depending on the event that you're planning, you'll want to strategically pick a time. Monday mornings at 8 a.m. probably aren't the best time to hold most programs, though it would be ideal for a breakfast during finals. Late Friday nights may also be tough to get a big crowd, but again, this depends on the program, its purpose, and the people who you want to attend. Pick a time that people are generally free, and one that your group members especially are free. The very worst part about planning a program is putting in a lot of time and effort into something you're so excited about and not having many people show up. Consider how long your program is going to be. Will people stay the whole time, or is this the sort of thing that they just drop in? Be sure to check the university events calendar online to make sure your program isn't competing with something else happening, either within your building or elsewhere on campus. Also, consider where the program is happening. A common lounge, a lobby, or outside the building where people might be passing by and stopping into the program is going to get different folks than a program that happens in someone's suite or elsewhere on campus. Keep in mind that people tend to not want to walk too far to anything, and you want your program to be worth people's time. Another important factor that can easily be forgotten is why you are having this program. You shouldn't just be having this program because we're required to. Yes, you may be required to do it in order to stay in the theme, but we don't want to just spend money and waste people's time and energy. We want to be hosting events that are beneficial for the community. This may be learning a new skill, gaining some new knowledge, or getting to know others in your theme better. Let's start with the obvious stuff. First, you need an idea. Ask around. Consider what's already happened for your theme. Maybe even look at what your theme or your RHA has done in previous years. This information should all be stored in FileMaker so you can easily look that up. Are there specific needs that your community has? Things that people in your group are interested in? Do you want to bring in a presenter? Or are you going to facilitate the program yourself? All else fails, you can always ask your hall director for some extra ideas. The next step is to put in a program request, and that's in FileMaker as well. Depending on your group and the activity, you may need to request money from your leadership council and provide minutes from a motion that was approved. The program request is a form in FileMaker which is going to ask for the date, time, and location of the event, as well as the program goals and learning outcomes. This is the why are you having this program part of things. Essentially, this box is to say what are people going to get out of this program. You want to make sure that these outcomes are accessible. In other words, at the end of the program, you'll complete a post-program report, and you're going to need to say if your outcomes were met or not. So write them in a way that you can easily say yes or no. You'll also want to put in the program on the university events calendar and print out any papers that you need. If you're purchasing food or other supplies, remember to request the P card or the Big Y card. Create a TA or open a purchase order or PO with a restaurant with plenty of time in advance. As a general guideline for most programs, you'll want to start this planning process about three weeks in advance, as most forms and card requests require about a two-week notice. If you're bringing in a presenter, I recommend that you start this process even earlier out, just out of respect for them and their schedule. Remember to advertise for your event next. You'll want to do this about a week or so in advance so people have time to plan their schedules accordingly, but it's not so far out that they forget about the program altogether. Keep your audience in mind. Consider who you're trying to reach and use that to determine if you need to hang signs around the building, send emails, or write whiteboard reminders. Get creative with advertising. Students are inundated with flyers, as you probably know. So what's going to make yours stand out? Bright colors, fun fonts, bright background paper. Maybe you do an unusual size flyer, extra big or extra small. Maybe it's a strange shape. Someone might stop and look at a three-foot sign that looks like a massive slice of pizza with a bunch of toppings cut out, as opposed to an 8.5 by 11 black and white flyer that just says, come join us for a pizza party. Maybe you release different flyers with funny sayings and get people talking about it, or looking around the building. 
Your options are endless, and most things can easily be done in Microsoft Word or Publisher, or with some simple markers and paint and big rolls of paper. About a week before the program, confirm your game plan. Touch base with any presenters coming in, whether it's someone from the local community, a professional on campus, or just another student. Always be a good host and consider if the presenter will need anything, a TV, a computer, an HDMI cord, or maybe they need speakers or just a simple bottle of water. Also create a plan for yourself. What time is your team gonna meet to set up? Will you need to make photocopies? When will you serve the food? When should food be delivered? Try to anticipate any roadblocks in advance. If you have an icebreaker that's best done with 15 people, but only five people show up, you need to have a backup plan already. Did you reserve space for the program? Do you need someone to unlock the door for you? Have you confirmed what time that room is going to be open? There's a lot of stuff to consider, and the more that you think about in advance, the easier it's going to go. The day before the program and the day of, personally invite people to the program. Saying, hey, I'm hosting this event tomorrow, I'd love for you to come, is an easy thing to do, and it definitely yields results. It's finally time to host your event. Remember to factor in time for setup and cleanup. You may need to move furniture around, set up the computer, or arrange food. At the end, please remember to take out your trash, clean up any dishes, and move back furniture that you may have moved. Always remember to do your assessment during the program. We'll talk more about this later on, but you're going to need to determine if your learning outcomes that you wrote on that program request were met or not. The last step is to turn in your post-program report and any other paperwork. All of this is due within 24 hours of the program, but if you can do it immediately, that's the best. Sonia likes paperwork to be turned in as soon as you return the P card or the big Y card, so have it ready for her. Sometimes things don't go as planned. Here are a handful of common roadblocks that come up. If you can anticipate problems in advance and you consider all of your options, you can probably make it work. Let's say that your budget is low and you need to have another program this semester. Obviously, you should always try and budget out money in advance so you aren't left with just pennies in the second semester, but should you find yourself in a place with minimal funding, don't stress too much. The first thing you should do is check your hall to see what supplies you do have on hand. You should really always do this before you go out and buy things, regardless of how much money you have left. You might want to consider buying generic brands or considering a different type of snack. Ice cream sundaes, pizza, and Chinese food tend to be much less expensive than sushi, Angelinos, or Moe's. If your hall doesn't have something on hand that you need, you can also ask other halls to borrow some of their supplies. Next, try to eliminate unnecessary aspects of the program. Do people really need to make a gingerbread house, or would they be okay with just making a gingerbread cookie? Get creative. Maybe you can hand make decorations instead of buying extra things from the store. And lastly, if you need to, you can always contact UROC, RHA, other themes, or RAs to see if you can co-sponsor a program together. More people means more budget. For our next scenario, let's say that you're bringing in an outside speaker, and the day before or the day of, they call you and say they can't make it. Unfortunately, this happens. Things come up that are totally unexpected. But if this happens to you, you have a few options. First, you can try and find another speaker, like a hall director or another faculty or staff member on campus, and see if they can present for you. But you may just need to change the program date. Be sure to update the flyers far enough in advance to let people know that the program isn't happening. What if you have no idea what type of program to put on? I recommend having a questionnaire and trying to figure out people's interest. You can make mental notes of things that you see people around the building doing often, maybe playing video games or playing basketball, and talk with your professional staff member for some support. Pinterest and Google are also great resources that can be a huge help. Talk with your peers, talk with the staff up at Central Housing, read the news, watch TV, ask friends at other schools, and even look through hashtags on social media. The key, however, is to not wait until the last minute. Let's say that you're having your program, but your audience members look bored. They're totally checked out, they're on their phone, or talking to their neighbors the whole time. There are some tactics to get people's attentions back. First, in planning the event, try and make the programs as interactive and hands-on as possible. People sit in classes all day long, and most people don't consider a lecture to be a whole lot of fun. Include video clips, small group activities, and discussions throughout your program. 
You might use residents' names when using examples or hand out a small prize for participation, like a piece of candy or some sort of raffle ticket. While it may seem insignificant, it really does help. If all else fails, you can always ask people to leave the program and remove their name from the attendance sheet. This way they don't get a priority point or any credit for going. Our last scenario is a common one. If you're planning events far in advance, you have absolutely no idea what the weather is going to be like, and you have no control over it when it comes. This is the chance that you have to take when hosting an outdoor program. Consider making a rain or snow date when advertising the program, and make your judgment call far enough in advance so that people know if the program is or is not happening. You may be able to tweak the program a little bit to have it inside or to change the time of the program to avoid the bad weather. Of course, there are countless other issues that you could run into when hosting a program, but with a little foresight and some resourcefulness, you should be good to go. Many programs offer food as an incentive to draw people in, but food can be expensive and there's only so much pizza a person can eat. Consider the time of day and decide if you need food and what type and amount of food is appropriate. A program from 5 to 7 p.m. probably needs some real substantial dinner, whereas a program at 8 or 9 means that residents might have eaten dinner and would be okay with just some cookies or a slice of pizza. This is important to consider when placing a food order since you don't want to run out of food, nor do you want to waste a lot of money on food that gets thrown away. Pizza is one of the most popular items to purchase for a program, but consider other types of food, perhaps a make-your-own trail mix station, a cereal bar, wings, appetizers, hot cocoa, cookies and milk, or even nachos. Now, believe it or not, people will go to a program without food, especially if your topic is good enough and you're a good presenter. You may not get as many people, but for those who do go, you can be sure have a genuine interest in the topic and being there. With every program that you host, you'll be more and more confident in your abilities to run a successful event. You'll get more used to the programming paperwork each time you fill them out, and you will inevitably learn from your mistakes. I recommend that you ask yourself after every program, what went really well and what would I do differently next time? This way, you can identify factors that made your event successful and you can remember to do them next time, and also identify areas to improve upon. Chances are, sometime in the future, you may be responsible for planning another event, Maybe something for work, a birthday shower, a bridal party, or a vacation. While these other events may not include a post-program report, this is a great transferable life skill. Good luck! Alright, that's all for this presentation. Please remember to take the assessment on our website.